Hey everyone, this is David from virtualtechteam.com and I'm here to show you a quick tutorial on using Upwork to hire freelancers for your business. So the first thing you have to do is go to upwork.com and register yourself for the platform. And once you do that, you'll see a, a screen like this. And so what we're going to do today is go through two sections of the site. Uh, first one is to how to search for freelancers. And the second one is how to post a job on Upwork. So the first one is let's search for freelancers. So you go to the top of the screen and you'll see this. So if you've hired freelancers in the past, you'll be able to see them here. But let's go to find freelancers just to show you how to search the directory. So you're going to see that there's a lot of different types of freelancers that you can choose from, different categories. And you can read all about it in your own time. But for this purpose, we'll look for, let's say, web development. Click web development. And then it's going. you're going to see a list of people that you can hire. And you can look through all these different developers so you can see that some have like different kind of languages like ruby some have some are web developers so you can see the kind of the skills that they have the picture and where they're from so this is pakistan russia philippines and a few things to note when you're looking through developers uh at least the ones that you're considering to hire uh, you can see that uh, like when they were last active, so it's good to, to hire someone who who is quite active on Upwork. Uh, then you can see the hours, the minimum, this is probably the minimum hourly um, fee that they're going to charge, the amount of hours that they have worked in the past. And this is the job success rate, you can see the percentage of freelancers that resulted in great client experience. So this is a good indication and then the stars the ratings that they have okay and you can see kind of the skills that they have and say that you like uh you might want to consider some of the freelancers so you can say i want to save this and consider him for later so you can say um possible for web div yeah so he might be a candidate so when you post a site uh post a job then you can look at the free save uh, the save freelancers and you can um, invite them to your job uh, you can also contact them through this button here uh, when you do that it will call up a um, a job description which will automatically invite that freelancer so it's just one um, but you have the option to uh, invite other freelancers to it uh, later on after you um, do it so it's a um, it's pretty simple there, but uh, we'll go to more detail for uh, posting a job in a moment. And uh, you can see their qualifications. And if you go through, uh, go to the profile, you can see in more detail like what they've done. So the overview and like what they've done in the past. And you can sort it through the highest rating and largest projects. And you can see the availability. So this guy is full time, so he has 30 hours a week. And you can contact through phone. You can hire and so forth. Good to check out the portfolio here. So you can see, you can click here. And you can see the link, what they've done. So it's good to take a look at that. I should also add that if you want to be more specific on what you're looking for, you can go to the search bar in the freelancers area and type in kind of the skill that you want. So let's look for a WordPress developer. So you can press WordPress and it'll give you s results for different WordPress developers. One thing to note is that you might see this thing called the agency contractor. So the as the name says that this person manages an agency which means he has a group of freelancers under his wing which for us means that uh, you shouldn't have a problem with them getting the work done for you so they'll probably manage all the workflow and, and the manpower and they'll get things done so they probably can handle a large amount of volume 
Uh, they tend to be slightly more expensive because, I guess, well, they're running a business, but uh, at least they can take care of the manpower issue for you. So the second part of the tutorial is to learn how to post a job. So what we can do is you can post a job here, this button. And what you can do is if you have uh, if you have used the previous uh, job before, you can call that up and it can auto-populate the posting for you. If you have never posted a job, then you can start creating the job description here. And the good thing about using Upwork and like Elance is that they have templates for you to, uh, to properly spec out your job description. So let's go through this. So you can, okay, let's create a job description for a web developer for WordPress. So we are going to click the category and we're gonna choose mobile web development and we're gonna choose web development here. Okay. And make sure when you name your post, uh, something it's something that is very clear. So web developer for WordPress. And if you want to be even more specific, uh, you can even put what kind of website it is uh, for e-commerce WordPress website. So you, if you're more specific on what the project's about, then the developers with the respective experience can go and apply for your job. Uh, over here, you describe what needs to be done. Uh, I'll leave that up to you, but basically you can give the background of what the project is about and what kind of skills that uh, you need. If you have a, a mock-up of how this website looks like, for example, if you need a site um, done by web developer and you have maybe the theme of it, uh, the WordPress theme that you want to implement and some of the content, you can attach that in a document so it kind of gives a background on for the developer so he knows what to do. Over here you can see that uh, what what kind of uh, position are you looking for so you have one time ongoing or I'm not sure so a uh, one-time project would you would use for a project that is has a very s fixed uh, scope uh, has a, a definite start to end. For example, if you are creating a website, that's the project. So the end result is that you have a website uh, in the end. So if you are creating a website, I would choose that. Uh, ongoing position would be uh, something that like maybe you need some website maintenance to fix any bugs or update any content um, from time to time. So that would be an ongoing position. Uh, if you're not sure, you can always discuss it with your developer or the person you're hiring and then you can figure out what's the best way. So for this tutorial, we're going to go for one-time project and then you can indicate what would you like to do. Uh, yeah, we'd like to develop a website from scratch so um, the, the freelancer knows what is involved. If you need more than one freelancer, uh, you can indicate that here. For the purposes of a website, if it's a small website, you probably just need to use one freelancer. That's fine. Uh, where are you in the life cycle of this project? Uh, depending on what you have, you can do it. Uh, I have specifications. We'll just say that. Uh, are you an experience managing this type of job? If you haven't, then you can put that here. I always recommend that you should have a pretty good idea on what to expect and that uh, because that can help uh, minimize any um, I guess miscommunications and it also sets a good expectation for that so you probably need to do a little bit of uh, education for yourself to to figure out what's involved and in other um, episodes uh, of our in on virtual tag team we'll be talking about how do you outsource web development going down this if you know what programming languages are involved uh, you should know. So uh, for websites, we can put HTML and CSS. So it even shows it here, HTML, CSS. Yeah. Okay. And that helped narrow it down. 
Uh, which software framework do you use? We could put uh, WordPress. Oh no, so I guess you don't need to do anything there. Uh, so whether skills that you have, should maybe like, okay, this you put WordPress here. Okay, maybe they need to have some uh, graphic design. Uh, so you can put that in here to, to figure out a more specific job description. Integrate any APIs? No, we're not doing that. Availability? So uh, this one you need to consider, like if you want to pay by the hour, uh, this is more for like ongoing work, like maintenance. So anytime they do work for you, you do it. Uh, or you can pay at a fixed cost. Usually for websites, you can probably get a good deal. Um, you maybe yeah you put in a uh, fixed cost here like a couple hundred dollars and then if the guy thinks that's good a good deal then he'll go do it and and generally if you pay a fixed cost it it there is an incentive for the freelancer to work fast because uh, he'll get paid right when it's done if you pay by the hour there they have an incentive to kind of draw it out but um, generally you don't really see that but um, Paying a fixed cost would give you more a peace of mind that your costs will stay, uh, you know, within your budget. So I would choose for this project fixed cost. So you can put a budget here. So um, you know, it's it's really going to depend on how big your site is. So I'm just going to put two hundred dollars just for example, and make sure you put an end date. Okay. And if you have any freelancer preferences, let's see what we have here. So anyone can apply. Only upward users can find this job. Only freelancers are invited. So it really depends on like what uh, what your setup is. If you don't, if you have not searched beforehand, then you can get anyone to apply to this job. If you only want select freelancers that you've kind of done your homework and saw that they're they're pretty suitable for your job, then you just put this one. But for this tutorial, we'll just do anyone can find this. If they have qualifications, you can put that in here. Um, and there are tests that um, freelancers can take to kind of demonstrate their qualifications. Cover letter. Um, this means that like when they're applying for your job, they'll have a cover letter to explain like what's their methodology and kind of introduce where they're coming from and um, how they will go about doing the job. So that's always good to have. And if you have any screening questions, like uh, what kind of, uh, yeah, what's your strongest job skill? Or if your, for example, if your website is uh, about finance, you can ask them what kind of experience in finance websites do you have? And then ask them to do that, to answer it. So once you do that, you can post your job and then you should be on your way.